So, this is what your bike ends up looking like after you ride higher ground hundo in PA, a week of New England mountain biking, and then ride a Ronnie Romance route with Terry Berenson, blasting through puddles at Nutmeg. So I did give the gunner a quick wash when we got home from that trip outside, but now I've kind of taken it apart a little bit and I really want to re-grease a couple things and really clean it up really nice, get rid of the rack for the winter and stuff like that. And while I do it, I wanted to talk about almost a year, but a full riding season with this bike and how it's been for me. This is the Gunner Rock Tour adventure. So this is the bike this year that I've been grabbing when I know I'm gonna do something a little bit more gnarly. I ended up putting 1,786 miles on this bike. Um, so a decent amount. And yeah, it would just be, you know, we were gonna go out, hit some railroad train gravel. I use this as my mountain bike too. I. Uh, I've been loving the style of sweep bar mountain biking. Yeah, whoops. The, oh, these are my spacers to make this rack work right that are falling out of here. Go, caught them. That's why it's nice to work over carpet. But yeah, so got a lot of use out of it, have a lot of experience on it, and I've really been loving it. Oh yeah, some serious grit down in there to clean. So it's been interesting to see a lot of the opinions on riding this bike on some of the rougher stuff or like when we were out in New England. I think one of the things people tend to forget is that, you know, when I was traveling, I was picking the bike that would be the best bike to split the difference between all the kind of stuff we were going to be doing. So I didn't always have the best bike for each situation, but I had the best bike to, like I said, split the difference. And I understand, you know, the way YouTube works, people will pop in for just like a video because they're, you know, they watch because they're familiar with the trail we were riding in the Hudson Valley. And they're like, well, that's the wrong bike for the job. And it's like, but you don't realize I was out here all week. I was riding country roads. I was doing gravel events, so. And the bike I would have been on if I didn't have this one would have been more beefy. I would have been riding my regular drop hour gravel bike with its 42 mil tires on all that rough stuff instead. So yeah, I was, I was really happy on that specific trip to have that, and not to say of some of the, you know, a bunch of the other rough stuff we do. So just a little less underbiking when I take this out. So yeah, I have loved the position of this bike with the sweep bar, something totally different. I've loved having the tire, uh, these brakes I'm cleaning up right now. I love, I have these, I've switched my gravel bike to these and then built this up with them, but they are the Grotec Equals, that Velo Orange imports. There was just a big review of them on, was that the Radivist or bikepacking.com that everybody was sharing and talking about? So it was the first Nutmeg Nor'easter I went to, and I saw people on like Rivendell's, and I remember seeing specifically uh, Miggy on a sweet bar bike, just like bombing down stuff and nailing everything, and I just thought that looked really fun. So I knew I wanted something kind of like that. Uh, this bike came available at Dirty River. I had tested it out, built up as a sweep bar or as a drop bar bike, and I wasn't really crazy about the way it handled. And and then Otis, who owned it, rebuilt it as a sweep bar bike, and I tried that out and I loved it. So it was a little later that I acquired it and build it up like this. My sweet bars are the Velo Orange granola bars. So yeah, this bike just really has filled a huge niche for me. Some of the bike trap, uh, the bike packing stuff we did this summer, the North Country Traverse in Michigan, I would have been in pretty uh, tough shape on my gravel bike. Uh, that would have been just a little bit too rough to be doing on drop bars and 42s. So I was really glad to have this. Also the way I build it up uh, with the pan, or set it up for touring with the panniers and stuff worked out pretty well. Um, mountain bike flow trails have become a ton of fun on this bike. So like machine built trails, it's really great for. I mean, you can ride regular gravel bikes on a lot of that stuff, but it's just even more fun with the bars that this has. Even being underbiked on some of the tougher mountain bike stuff we've done, I'm just glad I had it, because again, as I'm saying, it's not like I would have been riding something beefier, I would have been riding something less beefy. And I'm one of those people who a lot of times just likes to be able to ride to the trails and ride the trails, and so, like I've said a couple times about the term splitting the difference, this is great because 
it doesn't bother me that much on the road to ride either. If I know I'm sticking to, you know, mostly smooth or gravel, I'm still gonna grab my rally, obviously, but this bike is a great choice. Uh, it's a great choice to ride, you know, cause I'll ride out to East Rim and I'll go 10 miles to get, more than 10 miles to get to that trail, ride that trail and ride back. Might be slightly underbiked on some rock gardens, 95% of the time happy. So yeah, this bike has been just like kind of the perfect addition to my stable. It's the bike I just always grab when it's gonna be rough or it might just have my bags and my tools on it. And so I'll just grab it anyways because it's just a great all around bike. That may be leading some of you to wonder, is there any negatives? I'd say there's, there's a couple. Um, we kind of built this up, I wouldn't say a parts bin build, but you know, some of the stuff wasn't always made to go together. So with the front ring, it's 40, the front rings are 4428 and it's a SRAM XX derailleur. I do baby that shift from the, you know, big ring to the small ring. It can get hung up a little bit sometimes. So I'm just a little careful about that. Not really a big deal. Just gotta be mindful when you switch from bike to bike about stuff like that. I would also say, um, this is pretty minor and this isn't a huge issue to me in bikes, but aesthetically, I wouldn't consider it my favorite. I know Otis loved the, the silver color. I don't mind it, but it's not what I would have chosen seeing how some gunners have that like, you know, beautiful like electric blue, like my buddy John's bike. I also agree with uh, channel member friend, Pudgy Pedal Pusher, that that big head tube with that narrow straight bladed fork, uh, tends to look a little bit uh, fat guy in skinny jeans as Pudgy described it. Uh, that's true. We did put um, cheap brake levers on this bike. We had tried a number of things and the cheap ones just happened to be the work the best, but that is a thing that I feel like, you know, they will wear out over time and I don't like to you know, basically create junk. Man, these tires are in rough shape changing the subject. Just those, those New England rocks and nutmeg and higher ground, uh, they're gonna need probably some boots in there. Look at this, it's like watching RJ the guy, bike guy with these, uh, should just be in my socks. So yeah, uh, like I'm mentioning, I'm super hard on this bike. I am not good with through axles yet. This is my only through axle bike, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> Why is that piece spinning? Is that supposed to happen? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? Yeah, so it does take some abuse. I've definitely like a lot of my own fault of scratching the paint job and stuff like that, but there are some spots where I'm kind of surprised for being a Waterford built bike where the paint has flaked off. I guess that can be considered another downside too, the fact that Gunner and Waterford don't exist anymore. So something goes wrong. There's obviously no warranty. Plus, you know, I was just mentioning the paint and that is something that Waterford used to do was repaint bikes. Ooh, that feels gritty. I think I'd still need to clean that inside a little more. So yeah, I am super excited to get this thing back on the road. It's been sitting and, you know, taken apart a little bit for over a month, um, if you've been watching my videos, you know I just haven't been riding that much. So, just riding my rally or some of my vintage bikes when I've been getting out. I did not mark this seat post, but, and I don't. <laughs> there we go. But I will just test it out. I am not someone who is super, super sensitive to bike fit, but I do find that I do, I do get my seat, like height, pretty much the same across all my builds. Even though I have this sweet setback Thompson, this bike is a strong candidate for a dropper post. Um, I know Otis has been trying to convince me to do that, but definitely for the mountain biking I do on it, this would be great. This Brooks took some abuse too in the weather. I had the saddle cover, cover on it, but I went completely sideways underwater at Nutmeg. Brooks aren't as delicate as people think they are. They, take, they definitely take some care, but look at that. Nice and shiny again. I'm also gonna put this cool one-off for now, Nor'easter stem cap on this bike. 
I got this from Yellowbird Threadworks. Uh, you should definitely check them out. I was, I got red, and it was the special red one for the Rally. The Rally has a carbon Cannondale fork on it that it, when I took it off, looks like it has some kind of proprietary Cannondale BS. So I don't think this stem cap will really work right with that bike. Maybe this bike is more in the spirit of a Yellowbird stem cap anyways. Everything about this bike is dirty. <laughs> I did kind of plan to get all, like maybe over time, make all the hardware on this bike look, go to a um, pink, but I don't know. This still looks really cool on here, so. And everything is, it's mostly black right now. My buddy Gianna gave me this green seat collar and, cause he said only certain ones really work well with these gunners. So yeah, I wish I had this bike last night when we were out riding. Uh, we were riding a lot of gnarly stuff and this position in the dark would have been way more comfortable. I don't really have a video from those kind of rides right now. These are the shortest days of the year we have and so it's really hard to film any of my rides when I'm going out with my group because they're evening rides. But yeah, let me know. Did you guys get any new bikes over the last year that were like game changers for you? You know, for me, I really feel like this was not just a lateral move for my gravel bike and another bike like that, but this is really an adventure bike packing mountain bike, you know, it does it all on a certain side of the spectrum for me. And uh, with about a year in, I absolutely love it and I'm glad I have it. It's kind of one of those, I think it'll probably be one of those forever bikes. Anyways, I will see you in the next one. Thanks as always for watching. Peace.